Well, that was uh, David Cameron's response to the budget and a little taste of what he'll say when the election is called. We're going to leave the House of Commons there if you want to continue watching the budget debate. By the way, it goes on today and tomorrow and into next week. Uh, just switch over to BBC Parliament uh, because that's still good to cover the debate for you. Or indeed, you can look at our website, our Democracy Live website, which is at bbc.co.uk slash democracy live, all one word, and that is covering... Uh, all the Parliament's business for you there too, so you can follow it on BBC Parliament or on the Democracy Live uh, website. We'll bring you highlights, by the way, of Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg's response. That'll come a little later and uh, we'll bring that for you um, when it happens. So, with that in mind, before we ask uh, Nick and Robert and Stephanie for some considered thoughts, now that we've taken delivery of this huge pile of paper, the Red Book and all the notes to the budget, which they're busily looking at in the studio, uh, let me give you the main points of the budget um, as we've gathered them so far. So, starting with the economy, the broad picture of the economy. Uh, growth is forecast for 2010 at 1.25%. That forecast is unchanged. Uh, but for next year, 2011, uh, it's been revised downwards just a little bit to 3.25%. We can talk about how credible that figure is too, but that's the forecast given by Mr Darling today. On the deficit, well then, for 2009-10, £11 billion lower than forecast, and 2010-2011, £14 billion lower than forecast. David Cameron referring to that in his response there. Let's go on to borrowing. Now then, uh, on borrowing, we can uh, see that it's uh, estimated to fall to 4% of GDP by 2014 to 15, and the debt forecast revised downwards to peak at 75% of GDP by 2014 to 15. Those are the main headlines uh, from the borrowing section of the Chancellor's speech. If we go on to spending, government spending. Uh, in this, obviously, this difficult climate, to increase 2.2% above inflation in 2010 to 11. Um, and that's in the overall context, of course, of massive pressure, downward pressure on spending targets. £20 billion of government savings forecast. What are those savings precisely, you may ask? Well, we can ask the question because it's not entirely clear. And Whitehall savings to include relocating 15,000 jobs. And I think it's fair to say that relocating Whitehall jobs is a, a fairly familiar element in lots of these uh, budget statements, but we'll, we, maybe we can refer to that a little later on too. That's part of the savings targets. Looking at taxes, well, I suppose the headline here, and the headline really for lots of people for the whole speech, is the two-year stamp duty holiday on homes under £250,000, but that is strictly for first-time buyers. Uh, an increase in stamp duty to 5%, maybe that's paying for the first item, for properties over £1 million in value, that comes in from April 2011. And the inheritance tax threshold will be frozen for four years. So those are the main tax changes as we see them. On duties, the other bit of uh, tax that we can talk about, um, on fuel duty, which is clearly something that concerns many people, the three pence fuel duty increase won't come in straight away. It'll now be phased in over 10 months. Uh, the first penny in April and the second penny in the autumn and then the third penny uh, in January. Tobacco duty, well, that's going to rise 1% above inflation. And alcohol duty will go up 2% above inflation, but there's a clear exception, and that's the duty on cider. Um, that will rise by up to 10%. Uh, above inflation, which clearly is a very um, big and precise rise that the Chancellor has uh, explained there, although, again, there's been some debate about how practical and how realistic it is to target some of these uh, duties on individual drinks. Let's go on to business. The banks that were nationalised and are receiving huge support from the taxpayer to provide £94 billion in credit to businesses. That's the, uh, that's the target that's been given for their borrowing. And um, business rates to be cut for a year from October. That's to help um, all kinds of business, especially small and medium business. And uh, a guaranteed access to a bank account for one million people. That was heavily trailed and Nick referred to it, Robert referred to it too earlier on. That's so that um, people who are not normally able to get bank accounts uh, can access the banking system and that will help them in many ways. So that's, that's the guaranteed access the Chancellor was talking about. So... Those are the headlines for you, and the speech went on for, well, a good hour anyway, and um, we've just had that flavour of David Cameron's response. I'm just going to open it up here now in the studio because we've been having a good look at some of the figures. 
and to see what Nick and Robert